Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates. It's Thursday, March 31st, and you'll probably notice that this is the second update of a day. Normally I update you every other day. However, some, some disturbing video has shown up on Ustream that I wanted to talk to you about. First off, a little bit about my background. Um, I used to be an executive in the nuclear industry and one of the divisions I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors. So nuclear fuel racks are something that I know a little bit about. Nuclear fuel racks look like this. This is a square cans at the bottom of essentially a swimming pool and each can is designed to handle one nuclear fuel bundle. And that's the glowing thing you see sliding into the, into the can. Now, the, the wrapper around those cans, it has boron in it, and that's designed to prevent a nuclear chain reaction from occurring in the pool. You don't want a chain reaction to occur in the pool. That should occur in the reactor. Now, what happened at Fukushima was when the whole site lost power, at Fukushima 4, there was no reactor operating. All the fuel had been removed and was in the fuel pool. Now, normally the pools are cooled. However, they lost power, so there was no longer any, any cooling. It appears that the pools boiled dry. The uh, roof blew off the building. That indicates that hydrogen was built up from uh, something called the Zircaloy water reaction that had to occur at temperatures over 2200 degrees. Now, after that, the Fukushima staff has been attempting to pour water into that reactor. And you can see in this picture that up the side of the building is a, uh, is a hydraulic device. It's actually designed for pumping concrete that's pumping water up and over the roof and pouring water into the nuclear fuel pool. Well, this picture is undated, but it, when it was taken, it clearly shows that there's no water in the pool. Now, if you look, there's a, there's a green, long green device, and that's the refueling bridge. Normally, that glides along on rails above the pool, and the pool is that crystal clear water that you normally are used to seeing. Well, after the explosion, it has collapsed and is lying in the pool. Now, between seconds 33 and 37 on this video, you can see little boxes. And the little boxes are just to the left of that green bridge. The boxes are in air. Those boxes are the top of nuclear fuel racks. They're supposed to be under 30 feet of water. They're not. Now, what that means to me is a couple things. First off, the top of the nuclear fuel is exposed. Perhaps all the nuclear fuel is exposed, but certainly the top is. You can see steam coming up, but not from the top of the fuel. Down further in the cavity, there's steam coming up. So the water that they're spraying in is hitting the nuclear fuel and creating steam, but it's not filling that swimming pool. Now, the water has two purposes, cooling, but also shielding. So that means that the nuclear fuel is unshielded. That emits gamma rays, and the gamma rays go up into the sky, bounce off of air molecules through something called sky shine, and rain back down on the site as a background radiation that's much higher than normal. That makes work on site really difficult, and it makes work on that refueling pool almost lethal. Now, the other thing it means to me is that the nuclear fuel itself is extraordinarily hot, and the plutonium inside can become volatile. Now, I spoke yesterday in the, in the uh, earlier update about cerium being discovered off-site and plutonium being discovered. And the fact that the nuclear fuel pool does not have water in it, to me, indicates that it might be a clean path for those heavy elements to be escaping from the building and being discovered off-site. Now, I would recommend, based on this, that the evacuation zones should be pushed back further because of these heavy elements being released, as well as the cesium that was also in those, in those racks. Um, it does have some serious consequences. Um, as this situation develops, and perhaps more clear pictures uh, are, are available, 
I'll update you again. Thanks again. story that was published by Akio Matsumura, um, he sent a letter to Robert Alvarez, former senior policy advisor to the Secretary and Deputy Assistant Secretary for National Security and the Environment of the U.S. Department of Energy, because he wanted an explanation of what the potential impact would be out of the Reactor 4 rods and the other rods that are there at the Daiichi site. And at the end, his conclusion is, more than 200 times the amount of cesium-137 released at the Chernobyl accidents is estimated would be released. So what Akio says here is that many of our readers might find it difficult to appreciate the actual meaning of the figure, yet we can grasp what 200 times more cesium-137 than the Chernobyl would mean. It would destroy the world environment and our civilization. Is that true? Um, everything, I guess I would absolutely agree with everything except the last sentence. And okay. I could actually give another example. Okay. There's more cesium in that fuel pool than in all of the 800 nuclear bombs that were exploded above ground in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, but, of course, it would happen all at once. Um, it would certainly destroy Japan as a functioning country. Oh my God! And, and you know it would spread around the world and and um, and make life difficult the further you know move move south of the equator uh, if that ever happened. I think that's probably the lesson there. And that's why uh, the critical issue. And I don't know why Tokyo Electric has to move faster. They they've got to get the fuel out of Unit Four. If the spent fuel pool at Reactor Four. Uh, no, not if. When the spent fuel pool or reactor four hits the ground, that is literally the end of Tokyo, Yokohama, and most of Honshu. There's no question about it. It has visually been observed to be leaning in the past month. It's obvious the thing is headed to the ground. What is TEPCO doing about it? Nothing. What is Amazing. TEPCO? TEPCO is so worried about Fukushima every weekend. What do they do, Bill? How much work gets done on the weekend uh, at Fukushima? You told me this. I couldn't believe it. You told me this. They go home. They go home. They take the weekend off. Nothing's yeah. going on at Fukushima on the weekends. That's how committed TEPCO is to preventing a further catastrophe. It's, it's astounding. It truly is astounding. But All of what it. What you more astounding is that the rest of the world is doing nothing to help the Japanese because they're going to poison us the rest of the Europe. All the way around the Every world. damn scientist, the best of the best from Europe, Russia, China, America, should be in Japan or studying this around the clock and making recommendations. They got to get not only outside the box, they got to get outside the planet to start thinking about this. Are there even going to be any planet left? It's that bad. But right. tonnage just in spent fuel pool number four is over 260 tons of rods, fuel rods. And remember, there are new ones, most of them are used. This is what we're told anyway. There were mox fuel rods in there, and when a fuel rod has lived its useful life, boiling water, it's far more dangerous than it was as a brand new fuel rod that first gets inserted into the reactor vessel. It's all nuts. We can look at this mystery black dust that has been found in a number of locations, uh, locations around Honshu, uh, a million becquerels per kilogram in this black dust. Now, 500 becquerels per kilogram are said to be, quote, safe, although that's too much in my book. Uh, any is too much, but a million becquerels a kilogram of cesium found in this mystery 
black dust. Nobody knows what this dust exactly is. Uh, Gunderson says 20% of all young Fukushima girls are headed for cancer. Uh, this is a tragedy, and nobody's talking about it over here. Well, I'm sure it's going to be actually much higher than because if you're, say, 60 or 70, uh, you're more likely with the oxidative stress to have a heart attack and stroke. This is what happens after the over. If people just don't live long enough to have cancer, but if you don't have a heart attack or stroke caused by the oxidative stress in your artery well, you're going to get cancer from cancer, right? However, if there's another earthquake and building four collapses which contains the cooling pool with fresh fuel, I'm going to evacuate my family from Boston. released its IAEA report on the event. The report indicates that all three reactors on the cores, to some degree, are ex-vessels. The NRC staff has contemplated this scenario for some time uh, due to the duration of each of the reactors uh, went without core cooling. However, it's still too early to tell. We don't have specific evidence to show uh, the exact condition and how much of uh, any of the cores went ex vessel in those three units. And it's important to realize that uh, as uh, more and more new information comes available, and I think this will continue for months uh, to come, our understanding of the specific events and what actions need to be taken will be further refined. If the spent fuel pool at Reactor 4, uh, no, not yet, when the spent fuel pool at Reactor 4 hits the ground, that is literally the end of Tokyo, Yokohama, and most of Honshu. There's no question about it. It has visually been observed to be leaning in the past month. It's obvious the thing is headed to the ground. It truly is astounding. All of it. More astounding is that the rest of the world is doing nothing to help the Japanese because the poison of the rest of Europe. All the way around the Every world. damn scientist, the best of the best from Europe, Russia, China, America, should be in Japan or studying this around the clock and making recommendations. They got to get not only outside the box, they got to get outside the planet to start thinking about this, or there isn't going to be any planet left. Okay. There's more cesium in that fuel pool than in all of the 800 nuclear bombs that were exploded above ground in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, but, of course, it would happen all at once. Um, it would certainly destroy Japan as a functioning country. Oh, my God. And, and you know, it would spread around the world and, and, um, and make life difficult to further, you know, move, move south of the equator uh, if that ever happened. I think that's probably the lesson there. And that's why um, the critical issue, and I don't know why Tokyo Electric has to move faster, they, they've got to get the fuel out of Unifor. 